Illinois lawmakers head back to Springfield this week, and soon budget negotiations will get underway. Top of mind for leaders in both parties, how to care for the tens of thousands of asylum seekers who have arrived in Chicago and surrounding suburbs over the last year or more. The state has committed nearly $640 million to the crisis so far. Well, I talked with state senator and GOP leader John Curran about that and what else to expect when lawmakers head back to Springfield this week. Senator, good to see you. Thank you. Oh, very nice to be with you. So you wrote uh, in the Tribune an op-ed this past week that some crises are unexpected, but then you called Governor Pritzker's migrant crisis an invited one. Now, Pritzker has called Illinois a welcoming state. Legally, the distinction really, I think, is about giving certain protections to undocumented immigrants. Is it your view that the governor extended an invitation to Texas? The governor has extended an invitation to the migrants, and this started six years ago when he first took office. If you go back to when uh, President Trump's first term, Governor Prisker decided he wanted to take on the Secretary of State at the time. This was the message he started pushing out, and he's been pushing it ever since. And he's been passing policies of this welcoming, uh, rolling out the welcome mat throughout his six years in office. And that you will, that's where we're at right now. So let me say this, Mr. Leader, to be fair, the thousands who make their way here are being sent by Governor Abbott of Texas. Uh, Pritzker has asked him to stop it. He doesn't seem to be responsive. Have you had any conversations, any counterparts in the world of Texas to try and address this? No, Paul, I, I'm focused on Illinois. Um, you know, I would note that we're getting migrants from New York. We're getting migrants from, you know, many states. But we are an outlier in the Midwest. And that is why they are coming here. It's because our policies are a true outlier, and that's where we need to begin on this and start rolling those back. So as you know, the governor said he's willing to help build out in the city of Chicago. He's waiting for the mayor to pick a site to do that. So aside from closing the border and getting federal funding, which certainly would help in all of the situations, I'm curious, are there any helpful solutions you're hearing or you're presenting uh, as Republican leader in the Senate to help resolve some of this? Paul, the, 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 the welcoming policies of the uh, Governor Pritzker and his colleagues in the uh, Democratic majorities have passed over these years. We voted against them. The health care uh, for non-citizens, uh, health care that is cheaper than what most Illinoisans pay for health care themselves. Those types of programs that we have consistently opposed, the start to this, what we should be doing is rolling those back. So, yes. On a federal level, we need real immigration reform. That is where there's a real solution. But Illinois needs to roll back these policies that make us that outlier here in the Midwest. I'm sort of curious, do you, your colleagues in the Senate, do you view this as sort of a Chicago problem? Or do you see this as something that is a problem for surrounding communities and perhaps the state as a whole? We see it as a, it, the state as a whole, Paul. This is costing us untold hundreds of millions of dollars. Actually, what we really need is a true accounting from Governor Pritzker on the money being spent. He is moving money around using his executive author uh, orders uh, again, and that really is taking from other areas of the state and other programs. The, we have finite resources. We are crowding out other critical needs of citizens of Illinois to deal with this crisis so it really, we view it as a problem for the entire state, not just Chicago. So as you know, the mayor has said other cities in Illinois need to step up. The governor's office has opened up some grant money for municipalities to do that. As an example, Oak Park, a western suburb, got $400,000 through that program. Curious whether you've heard from any town leaders in your district uh, about what they're thinking and what do you think? I have not heard from anyone looking to invite this in my district to their front door like Chicago has. Chicago and Illinois need to start rolling back those inviting programs that are asking people to come here. Um, that would be a great first step for the mayor of Chicago. You know, and to be clear, look, you make it very clear in your op-ed that you believe in the value of immigration. You point to your own family's history uh, and immigration there. So I get that. Um, when I talk to Democrats in the legislature about the possibility of supplemental funding, because you'd have to do that, much less the new budget, the answer seems to be, well, the state 
has to deal with a lot of things. We're concerned about all Illinoisans, the homeless. And you point out in your op-ed, and there's low-income families that, that have to be assisted, people with uh, developmental disabilities, small businesses still struggling from the pandemic, veterans who need mental health services. I guess my question is, do you see any short-term supplemental assistance in this world? Or does it look like there's more on the plate that the, that the even if the budget, if the migrant issue weren't there, it's still too much? Paul, we're facing a deficit in the upcoming year, um, upcoming budget. And so right now, everything is being crowded out. When you insert this crisis into it, it is a, a strain on, on all those sensitive areas you just mentioned in the state. So I, you know, we, we have finite resources. We have to concentrate on what the state of Illinois is obligated to, to provide its citizens, first and foremost, we, the governor has taken his eye off the ball here. It is part of his play to get on the national stage. We, he needs to focus on Illinois. Just to be clear, do, do you see supplemental funding or is this the next budget issue? Next budget issue. All right. Let's talk about some other things that you are dealing with because it's not the only yeah. thing on your plate. Invest in kids. Republicans pushed for an extension of that act in the fall. No vote was taken. Now scholarships are ending in the spring. In fact, a couple of Catholic schools have said they're going to need to close if they don't get uh, money. Uh, are there new discussions around the program happening as these budget negotiations are underway? Paul, there are, I've heard new discussions, new new ideas, nothing that seems to have taken any traction yet. We are in full favor of empowering these families with, with, with a school choice, a school option that best suits their child. Um, we're hopeful that something's going to get some traction here. We have been consistent in our support of that program. What's your response to uh, opponents to the program who say, look, the problem is that the state needs to put its money into public schools because private institutions really aren't accountable to the public. Um, Republicans, of course, have advocated for more school choice, but is there a way to do both? There is a way to do both. And actually, the program we had in place was a it was a very small amount uh, that, that was would cost the state. And quite frankly, people could find different ways to get that right off, Paul. So it did. So I'm not sure it cost the state anything. We have been meeting our funding obligations with K through 12. We, we have funded the, um, you know, the three hundred fifty million dollars additional each and every year. Uh, we've been meeting that metric. Uh, so we we had it. This was really killed based upon ideology. It was not at all a budget matter. And in fact, we were admonished by the Democrats at budget time that by advocating for this, we were trying to bring non-budget matters into budget discussions. Of course, it is election time now with the March 19th primary pretty much upon us. Your colleague, uh, House Minority Leader Tony McCombie, she said, we're probably not going to see a lot of stuff legislation coming out of the House. What's on the agenda for the Senate? I think the, I think you're going to see the Senate working very diligently. Um, there's a lot on, on the agenda and, quite frankly, the budget. Uh, we have pushed to start budget talks, budget negotiations a lot earlier this year than last year. It was very rushed at the end last year. Um, so I'm very hopeful that we're going to work in a more diligent manner. We are facing a deficit. It is imperative that we take a look at each and every part of the budget to find ways to save money so we're meeting the obligations of the res uh, residents of Illinois. Just I want to turn the topic just a little bit with only a minute left, and that's to ethics. Republicans, of course, seek additional ethical reforms. Governor Pritzker said, hey, we've done a lot in that area. Can you briefly detail what's in the works in the world of ethics modifications? You know, Paul, uh, the Senate Republicans, our proposals um, have been to really empower local prosecutors with the same tools that uh, the U.S. attorney has uh, in terms of wiretapping authority, more of those RICO style. We, we have to we have resources, but we have them on the sidelines and we're wholly dependent on, on the federal authorities to root out corruption. Um, so I'm hopeful that we're actually going to get some traction on that, as well as I want to empower the attorney general. Look, it's a Democratic attorney general, but we, he's got a statewide grand jury and he is prohibited from using that to investigate crimes of public corruption. We need to get the attorney general into the game. We need to get local prosecutors into the game and quit being reliant wholly on the feds. More to talk about. Out of time for today, but please come back soon. Senate Republican Minority Leader John Curran, thank you for your time. Let's chat again real soon. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Paul.
Still to come, a controversial resolution leads to division among city and state leaders. We'll fill you in when we come back. Stay with us.